In this quick tip, we'll dig a little further into the uses of the Oxford suppressor. It has a lot more tricks up its sleeve than just DSing. We'll start by placing it on some individual tracks of the TVQ, first with the drums. As you can see, here's your traditional presets, vocals, DSing. But I've got a preset made to remove some low end from a drum part. Pulling down the threshold level fader will reduce the low end defined between the frequency bands. Making them wider removes more low end without touching the other bands. Let's do the same thing to the bass track. We'll call it up and go to that preset and just start removing some frequencies. Low end remover. Now it's pulling out a lot. Experiment. Make it a little tighter. It's definitely pulling out a lot of the low bottom that you'll never hear on television anyway. Now we'll go to the guitar parts. These are four channels bust into one stereo group, so I'll assign the suppressor to the stereo group. Pull it up. You can hear it can make some creative effects too if you want. This will define the frequency bands once again. So it can be used like an EQ and a frequency conscious compressor. So the suppressor can be used on individual channels, or we can use it on the whole mix like a mastering tool. There's actually three different versions of the suppressor. The high res version is the best resolution, but has a lot of latency. The low latency version has only 512 samples of latency, and the standard version has 2048. You can see the latency on the full mix. It's even got a warning sign telling me I should adjust my buffer. So as we mentioned, there's frequency conscious compression, which means it's only going to reduce what we tell it to reduce. So I'll just move the filter handles around and let you hear. Very wide. Make it narrow. Pull some of the low end down. Wider. By selecting the inside button, we listen to only what's inside the frequency bands. Let you really define your frequencies. I'll drag it down even more. Let's put it back in and readjust. I just want to pull some of the bottom down, just like I did on the individual tracks, but now with the stereo master. It has the ability to leave everything else untouched. Let's experiment with some of the high-end frequencies. Swing it back to the lows. And we'll just tighten up a little bit of the bottom. Exaggerate it. There we go, that sounds good. So the Oxford suppressor can be used on individual tracks or as a stereo mastering tool. 